by, I'm thrilled to be moderating this um, this Google Hangout and this overall tweet chat. For those of you that are watching this live right now, we'd like to invite you to participate, engage in the conversation, uh, send out your tweets, use that hashtag MedX. Um, Nick Dawson, who's behind the scenes, will be kind of curating all that stuff, and we'll try to get to as many questions and comments as possible as we go through. Um, I guess most appropriately, since I just mentioned that hashtag, we uh, were joined by the co-founders of Simpler. Uh, we're going to get into who they are, what they do, and what that means for MedicineX and for the broader healthcare community throughout the uh, upcoming hour. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Uh, Thomas and Alden, uh, how's it going? Alden, we're going to start with you. Uh, just give a little bit of background about yourself before we get going and how you kind of got going with the whole Simpler thing. Sure. Well, um, first, my, my funny name, I'm originally from Norway. Um, I, I travel a little bit. I spent a year in China before I ended up here in, in California. And uh, while being here, I was introduced to, um, to Tom, my, my partner now in Simpler, and his colleagues at the Fox Group. And fairly shortly, I, I become involved within the, the healthcare industry. And together, we're trying to devise up uh, various technology and, and ways to to promote you know the use of social media within healthcare. Uh, so that's a, that's a short short intro about me. Thank you. I would go ahead and, and Thomas, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, sure. I am glad to be here and, and uh, hello to everybody. Uh, uh, as Alden said, uh, we first met uh, with a consulting firm that I've been a partner at for quite a number of years. Uh, yeah, by the name of the Fox Group, and we specialize in providing consulting services to healthcare providers. And um, once Auden came on board with us, that's where we started to really delve into the social media space, uh, the online sphere, and wanted to make sure that we were being able to address what the needs were that we saw emerging out there. And that's where we ultimately uh, launched the company Simpler uh, as the vehicle by which we could do that. So I'd like to apologize to everybody that has been watching live or potentially watching the archive. I, uh, I've been told that my microphone was muted for the first minute, which means that you missed the disclaimers that the views and opinions aren't necessarily that of, they don't reflect the Stanford School of Medicine, they don't reflect Medicine X. You missed the part where I reminded everybody that, th that today's date is December 17th, 2013. I apologize for those technical difficulties, but thanks to the wonders of Google Hangouts, um, those errors can quickly be modified by other people participating and hosting this chat. Uh, joining me additionally with Auden and Thomas are a couple of members of the ePatient Advisory Board. Hugo, how's it going this evening? I'm doing well. It's it, it's been great. It's I'm excited to be here and uh, um, uh, and participate in this in this discussion. Um, hopefully, we can uh, get into a lot of interesting stuff about um, social media and how I think, in my opinion, patients really have. Uh, a, a, a platform in which we can actually have the same voice as a lot of the big pharma and big medical device companies out there, which is uh, a very exciting thing to me, in my opinion. And Lisa, you got a haircut. Ah, big breaking news, haircut. Um, thanks for noticing. Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Bernstein. I'm one of the members of the Stanford Medicine XE Patient Advisory Board. I'm also a three-time cancer survivor, and the one and only reason I am here today and I was able to get involved with this incredible conference, Medicine X, is because I got on social media. So it's very exciting to talk about all of that, especially as a we still have applications open, quick plug, for our uh, scholarship program. And last but not least, Dr. Chu. I uh, apologize for the for the muted first minute. Thanks for picking me up on that one. No worries. Uh, 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 that's what we're here for, to help each other. Um, thanks so much uh, for uh, agreeing to moderate tonight. Thomas Adler for joining us. Uh, these, um, these hangouts are a new thing for us at Medicine X, but really excited at how they're going, and I can't wait uh, for the discussion this evening. So thanks so much. All right, and again, as we uh, are having this conversation, for those of you watching live, the hashtag for Twitter, and I guess technically on Facebook too, but mostly for Twitter right now, is MedX. Keep those comments coming, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Uh, so the first super broad topic 
um, for everybody out there, which I guess it's kind of impossible to answer this, but we're going to give it a go over the next you know, 10 to 12 minutes. Thomas, we'll start with you. Why does data matter? Why, why do all this stuff? Why, why take the time to curate all of, all, of the, all of these 140 character comments that are hopefully on topic whenever they're using the, all these healthcare hashtags? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, the, the, the buzzword that's been kicked around uh, recently is big data. And if we uh, go back, I think it was about five years ago, I remember reading somewhere that if we were to print the internet uh, and start reading it like a book, it would take 57,000 years of 24-7 reading. Uh, we've never been in a situation like this in our, in our human history where we have so much digital data. And with the proliferation of the social web, that's just growing at a crazy rate. Uh, one of the things about Twitter is it seems to be a real epicenter for healthcare conversations. And healthcare is something that everybody in every walk of life can, can relate to. It's an important part of our existence. And we're going to be confronted with, with healthcare issues personally, uh, with, with uh, family members and such. And uh, with all of this wealth of data that's piled up out there, uh, there's an awful lot that we can extract out of that. And that's where the fascination comes in as far as what can we extract out of it and how do we go about doing that. Uh, and so that's one of the focuses of Simpler is we've begun to uh, develop various algorithms and such to be able to find out really what does exist in that uh, ever-growing pile of data. And uh, as far as Twitter goes, uh, um, you know, we haven't mentioned the healthcare hashtag project yet in this, this tweet chat, but that's the one thing that uh, Simpler is probably best known for. And we, uh, we uh, archive healthcare-related tweets. And as of this morning, we crossed the 360 million tweet mark. So that's, that's quite a, a, a bowl of information to go diving into and to see what we can pull back out of it. Uh, that's, I, that's a really big number. I'm not really sure what you're doing there. Uh, Alden, uh, uh, just, I, guess, I guess kind of quickly, is, is there a simple way to kind of explain, explain Kind of how kind of how this information is really curated, how you're going about, just kind of, just kind of uh, I guess, uh, like somewhat kind of high level ethical um, kind of breakdown of, of what's actually going on and and how you're actually curating all this data. Sure, I think I got your question. So, which was, you know, how we how we manage all this data, how we curate the list, and how we do that. So, you know, like like Tom said, about three years ago. Uh, we made up our own little list of, of healthcare hashtags. Um, we wanted to sort of provide ourselves and the people that we cared about a way to easily see where the various healthcare conversation was taking place at that time uh, on especially Twitter. So we made a, a short list. I think it was 120 hashtags, Tom. And... Uh, and it just grew from there. We added more and more as we discovered them and as uh, new hashtags are created. And, and then shortly thereafter, I think we added a way so that other people can actually add hashtags to the project, so not just us. And that, uh, that really made the whole deal. So <laughs> we made the Hilker Hashtag Project social, which, which would make a lot of sense to do that. And it, it just exploded. And so from going to a few hashtags that we added, to now we're getting several hashtags submitted every day by by tons and tons of people. So at this moment, I think we have uh, is it three four thousand uh, healthcare hashtags um, submitted by over I think fifteen hundred different people and organizations and entities. So it just uh, in in many many ways it took on its life of its own. Um, and we've just been sitting here uh, trying to manage the back end of it and a little bit of the front end. Uh, there's a lot of growing pains when you go from uh, just a few few hashtags to several thousand, and like Tom said, uh, for a few thousand tweets to several hundred millions. Uh, so we did a lot of transitions to over the summer um, on the technical side, how to, how to manage this. Uh, also on the curation, um, we categorize uh, these in, in various different ways. And we have some regular hashtags uh, that talk about some industry things. It can be, uh, uh, you know, diabetes as, a, as an illness. Um, it can be the famous Hicksum hashtag, HCSM, uh, which is very broad. 
Then we had some tweet chats uh, hashtags, like uh, like this one, Medex, which is a regular scheduled hashtag and uh, meetup, basically. And then lastly, we have conferences, and um, which is very very interesting. That has uh, we've seen tremendous growth in that over the years. So so I'm going to try to get to these shout-outs while I also apologize for my technical difficulties. They are just abound tonight. Uh, so we've got George from Australia and the Face SA project from South Africa. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so you mentioned that last bit about conferences. I think that that's obviously that's kind of why we're here talking about Medicine X. Um, Thomas, are there any kind of um, are there any specific bullet points that you've noticed as you've kind of started to, to, to pay attention to the overall conversation, not just with the tweet chats or with the kind of casual conversation, but particularly whenever it comes to healthcare conferences? Because I mean, usually there's going to be somebody that's saying, "Hey, everybody, let's talk about let's talk about our conference." Use this hashtag, and then things just kind of explode over the course of, 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 of I guess, over the course of that entire meeting, right? Uh, sure. Uh, one of the things that we've seen change is it used to be that. Uh, during a conference or leading up to a conference, oftentimes it was the attendees that were establishing what the hashtag was going to be and starting to share that and to tweet about the conference and share ideas and, and such. Um, and what we've noticed in the last year to year and a half or so is the conference organizers have woken up and they're being much more proactive, uh, establishing that hashtag uh, and uh, promoting it far in advance so that everybody knows this is the hashtag for this event. You know, sometimes when hashtags were more homegrown by the participants, there may be one, two, or even three hashtags for an event, and it kind of made for a fragmented conversation. So um, that's been a, a noticeable change where the organizers themselves have been establishing that. And in some cases, uh, actually registering hashtags with us for almost uh, close to a year and a half now out into the future. So they're, they're really thinking in advance about this. And what it enables them to do is to harness that conversation and then dive into it after, during or, or afterwards to see what was resonating with, uh, with the audience and what was talked about most. Or one of the more recent uh, things is people like that badge of how many tweets they had. Well, we, we had the most uh, for the conference or most in a day or or, or you know whatever the case may be there so um, people are paying much more attention to that social conversation and how that plays out now I suppose we don't need to uh, actually mention the fact that Medicine X has set a couple records as far as tweets are concerned at the conference we're just going to skip right over that little point um, Hugo uh, to you I want to go over to you because I mean as Thomas had mentioned I mean conference organizers are, are as Thomas said are starting to wake up they're starting to promote, they want to promote this stuff early and often they want the conversation to last longer than just the conference. Independent of Medicine X, because you, you kind of you travel around a lot, um, have, you noticed that, have, you, have you noticed that from your end? Um, well, yeah, I think, you know, I, my, 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 my use of social media is, is sort of um, very, um, I would say very narrow in a sense that uh, there, there is only a handful of, uh, of, of uh, things that I talk about, uh, you know, I'm sort of, uh, kind of a man on a mission, and so um, I, I don't have, I, I don't really, and, and perhaps I, I, I should, but I don't usually try, to, I don't usually expand the conversation too far beyond um, the kinds of things that I am uh, particularly trying to effect change on. And so, uh, and, and so that stays within the realm of, um, of social media and healthcare as it kind of touches uh, cardiology and heart rhythm and that kind of stuff and so um, so so I suppose if I understand your question well and I so I, I suppose the, I, I, I kind of stay I follow a lot of uh, some of the cardiology conferences um, I follow um, um, there, there's a lot happening nowadays in, in on, on social media in terms of healthcare. So it's starting to become um, a, a little bit overwhelming at points and at times. And I, I feel like a little bit uh, overwhelmed at, at certain time, points. So uh, I again, so because of that, try not to stay too overwhelmed. I, I stay focused on on, um, on 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 the few topics that kind of have the most relevance to me. Is that um, I'm not sure I answer your question properly. No, I, I think you did. I think it's just a matter of, I mean, if you, you can only, 
you can only pay attention to so much over the course of over the course of a given day. So you have to pick and choose which hashtags, which conversations are the most important to you. Um, and I think that that is is kind of where it all goes. Um, before we keep going, I want to give a shout out to Karen Solis from Mexico. I met, I met, excuse me, a MedX ePatient Scholar alum. Uh, excuse me, the EI Lilly Center for Innovation is also uh, paying attention to their conversation. And for everybody else, in case you're just joining, uh, again, this is uh, MedX Live for December 17, 2013. Again, that, that hashtag is MedX. We are talking data, big data, little data, lots of tweets. Uh, just all kinds of fun stuff, and I just keep going back to the word data because I'm a big fan of it. I guess it's probably the you know it's probably the person in, with diabetes in me. Um, we're talking with the folks from Simpler, Thomas and Alden, and uh, I guess we're ready to move on to topic two. For those of you participating online, um, this is going to be kind of self-serving a little bit, but it's also really important given the fact that this is the MedX Live uh, Hangout. Um, Alden, I guess we'll start with you. Uh, what were there, were, were there any high level and high level? Were there any kind of noteworthy bullet points that you noticed coming out of Excuse me. Coming out of all of the conversation, all of the hashtags, all of the tweets, um, specifically to Medicine X 2013. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a very interesting conference to both attend and uh, to analyze afterwards. And, and Tom, you, you can you can ping in here any comments I miss. Um, but in general, it was a lot of tweets. I think a, a record-setting conference. Uh, we track. I think we track about 1,900. I think we're going to pass uh, 2,000 different hash uh, conferences uh, that we have tracked uh, in a couple of days. 2,000. So we have a lot of data to compare Medex to, and uh, it was a lot of tweets, uh, the most uh, record-breaking uh, for the days. Uh, we dwell into the data, and I think I can I can try to share some of this graph uh, that we that we publish later um, that shows a little bit what was taking place. Um, perhaps first, notably, can you see this graph? Not yet. Okay. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. Okay. So what you see here is a, a probably very faint for you guys. Um, there's, some, there's some red nodes or circles here, and there's some lines linking them between them. So this is actually for the last year's conference, um, 2012. But it shows who were physically present basically in the room, and who were tweeting on Twitter, uh, the MedX hashtag, and how they mention each other, how the, the relationship is. So what we did, we took those, and then we added, because we knew who were actually there, we added everybody else around the world who also used the MedX hashtag during the conference, and, and we added them to the picture, as you can see here now. And uh, it, it just explodes in a number of nodes, explodes in a number of links here, and uh, especially the impressions of reach. So what you're basically seeing is that even though you have a certain number of physical uh, attendees at the conference, the number of people who actually attend uh, also socially is many times larger than a physical conference. And, and to relate that back to MedX, it shows that this is such a, a wide-reaching you know, high impact conference uh, that it it uh, it uh, creates a, a lot of engagement outside the the actual location. Um, we um, we also took a look at what happens after the conference, and because we wanna we have all these conferences, and we wanna try to figure out what makes a difference for a conference. Why are com some conferences more successfully socially? than others. And uh, so we thought, why not, instead of looking at the, the few days during the conference, let's look at the days after the conference. And this is the typical graph you will see for the, the various uh, conferences we track. This is the last 30 days of a conference. And you can see it, it, it the, the tweet activity quickly drops, and it just flatlines. That is what's typical. And then we compare that for the last 30 days after conference for a number of, of well-known conferences. Uh, MedX, which is blue here. Then we have TEDMed, which is light, you know, green. Uh, Health2Con, yellow. And HIMSS13, which is red. And these are really successful conferences, much more engagement. And we, 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 we chose these four. We looked at some, some metrics among these, you know, how, how they're doing. Um, again, uh, MedX here in blue seems to do really well. Uh, lots of uh, tweets uh, post-conference. 
uh, even considering uh, a conference like HIMSS 13 here, which I think it had 40,000 attendees uh, this year, and, and MedX is about 500. So what is it with MedX that makes a big difference? Uh, we tried to look at the actual tweets themselves, the content of the tweets. What are the people talking about? And here we 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 shown a word frequency, trying to pick up the the main topics that people talk about. And what was what what stood out for us is that number one for medics was patient, as well as number ten was patients. Uh, so patients were much more in focus, much more centered in 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 all the conversation here compared to the other other uh, conferences. Um, in fact, you can you can see uh, this year, 25% of all tweets uh, during the conference actually included the word "patient" for medics, which is uh, unusually high. Uh, which which may explain why this conference has just a major impact. And we we relate this back again to the content. You know, these are patients sharing stories. Stories uh, is what very easily goes viral because it connects with people. It tells a great thing that we need to to think about in in healthcare. And um, yeah, it's um, this seems to be the the, the main difference I think uh, with medics what, what stands out. So we had mentioned this in, during and during last week's uh, hangout that the patient is is pretty much front and center during the conference, and that's uh, that's one of the big things that kind of sets MedicineX apart from from its peers, and, and I guess if you want to call it competitors. Um, Lisa, you you've been at MedicineX before. I mean, and we, and we we've seen this data. We have we've been actually privy to this data prior to this uh, chat, and there's actually been a blog post about this stuff over on Simpler.com. Um, I, what do, what, do you, what does that mean to you? I mean, what, what do you take out of all this stuff? I mean, it's like you said, you. You are a patient. You're part of this conversation. So, I mean, so these tweets are potentially about you. But whenever you see this data and you see that that patient is used, you know, 25% out of all the tweets, out of all the thousands, out of all the thousands of tweets during the entire conference, what does that mean to you? Well, it means that you know that we patients are one of the key stakeholders in in healthcare, and I think you know what Twitter, social media, and and all of this two-way communicating, what it's allowed is that patients are able to, to talk for themselves now and not just be spoken for or about. And that's just incredibly empowering and it just brings that missing voice to the, to the conversation. And I think that's I think that's a huge, um, and obviously given the passion around this and that, you know, how much how much tweeting there was, and all of that tweeting from Medicine X wasn't just by patients. It was by technologists. It was by other, you know, uh, stakeholders such as physicians and so forth. It just shows that, you know, I think there's a hunger for everyone to to be able to really hear each other's points of view. And I'll add one last thing. I think what patients, for instance, those of us who who went on the main stage and and told our stories in public, what it's something where you, when you're a patient or when you have such a, a huge health history and you take down that mask um, that, you know, quote unquote normal people, you know, or that you wouldn't, like, for instance, I'm as a cancer survivor, I used to keep that separate from the fact that, you know, oh, I'm a professional person and so forth. But when you turn into an e patient and an e patient advocate, you end up telling that story in circumstances where you're also being a professional. And I think it puts people around you in a funny way. It puts them at ease because it allows for them to also relate to you as a human and not just through those professional roles. Does that make sense? I think so, yeah, definitely. Uh, Dr. Chu, I'm going to put you on the spot here. 25% of all tweets during MedX 2013 included the word patient. Uh, how do you feel about that number? Do you want that number to be bigger for 2014? Do you, are you comfortable with, with that percentage? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think the philosophy of Medicine X actually is to think beyond numbers. Uh, that's why uh, that that's part of the symbolism of the X in our name of Medicine X is to move beyond 2.0 or 3.0 or numbers. Um, so I, I don't know how I, if I can immediately respond to an exact percentage. Um, I think it's more important to talk about the overall philosophy of a conference designed for everyone, 
that aims to bring all the stakeholders together uh, to talk about how to innovate healthcare. Um, I think maybe part of the reason why uh, Medicine X has a higher percentage of the discussion centering on patients um, compared to other conferences is because patients haven't historically been uh, one of the stakeholders that have been uh, brought to the table at medical conferences and of course that's something that makes Medicine X unique. Um, but in general we aim to bring all stakeholders together and I think I, I, I look forward to the day where people aren't surprised that 25 percent of the discussion has the word patient in it when you're talking about a healthcare conference. Uh, it shouldn't be surprising. So Thomas, this is for you. Uh, I, I, so we saw, I mean, is, so the, the data for Medicine X is, is pretty overwhelming as far as including, as far as patient involvement is concerned. For other medical conferences that have their hashtags tracked by Simpler, do you think that do you think that they are concerned about the, the lack of patients being included in the tweets? Do you think that they're focusing on specific keywords and just hoping that, that those keywords are driving their conversation? How do you think that they're looking at the data? Uh, good question, and I, I would suspect that, first of all, they are starting to seriously look at the data uh, because, as Auden pointed out, you know the, the, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. So one of the things that we uncovered was the um, those conferences that... Uh, do have patients included both in the audience and as speakers at the events tend to have a, a greater social media presence and greater reach and spreads the message of the conference much further than those that do not do that. Um, you know, our, our, our data sampling may be somewhat small to make that claim right now, but it has been consistent to this point. So I think that there's probably a lot of uh, conference organizers that are taking note. Uh, and, and as we pointed out, you know, there are those conferences that have been including patients uh, uh, in the discussion. It's a matter of to what degree. And I think that's maybe one of the things that uh, I personally found remarkable about Medicine X was that there was such a large presence physically at the conference uh, and both on the stage and in the audience of, of the patient point of view. And one of the things that I think that did was it creates a different dynamic than conferences where, uh, you know, we're, we're all of a like mindset uh, and we don't have oppose, opposing or not, maybe not opposing, but different points of view challenging the norms uh, within our circle. And so I think, uh, as Dr. Chu pointed out, having the different stakeholders, be they patients, be they physicians, um, be they people from uh, all walks of healthcare, bringing them together in, in one conversation creates a dynamic that really generates a fascinating and um, uh, much, much broader conversation. And that's the kind of thing that really, I think, leads to new ideas and ultimately to, to change for the better. So I think those types of things are, in fact, going to be recognized more and more by the organizers. I would hope so. So I think that it is important to to acknowledge that while we are focusing on the patient perspective and the patient involvement in these conversations, it's not the only perspective that's being included in these conversations at Medicine X and just as as part of the broader healthcare conversation. Um, Alden, do you have any 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 graphs or any analytics, any fancy pictures for us to, to kind of detail the, the the other kind of I guess the other side of the coin as as far as healthcare providers are concerned? Yeah, we we do track. Um positions uh, on, on Twitter as well. So what, uh, can you confirm if you see my graph now? Wait for it. Still, there it is. All right, go, go for it. Great. So, so this graph just, again, just compared one of these uh, very successful conferences. And, and Medix is here to the left. And what you're seeing here is the number of tweets that's tweeted by a verified U.S. physician. And, and just to, to remind us all, this is just a sample. So what we've done is simply we, we, have, um, we have identified a few thousand U.S. doctors and, and linked them up to the NPI number. So we for sure know that these are doctors and we know what, uh, what uh, specialty and so on they're doing. Uh, so this shows that this is, is a tremendous, even though this is a patient, that the conversation is very much around patients, 25%. Uh, the number of physicians also participating here is, is record-breaking, actually. 
So I think, just like Dr. Chu said, um, he's bringing together all the stakeholders. And, uh, and again, uh, we're seeing the same thing happening actually in the data. So we're just reporting the data here. That's, again, I guess, I, I guess we have to go back to the adage that numbers don't lie. Um, as we continue, Austin, the incidental economist, Hello, thanks for tuning in. Um, as, as far as the the overall kind of possibilities with this data are concerned, uh, I guess Thomas, I'll go back to you. What do you think are, are, are the key kind of action items that, you, that healthcare providers could be using as far as seeing all these different conversations happening and not just necessarily lurking on the conversation but taking a step back to look at the broader numbers that are being kind of included with, with all these tweets? Well, when I think of, uh, of what action can be taken in relation to it, uh, I guess that's one of the interesting things about the analytics is, um, and it's one of the things that first brought us to start doing uh, some of this hashtag tracking and, and analysis, is to help people to get engaged, to be able to more easily find the conversations that you may be interested in for whatever reason, uh, or find the people that uh, you would like to become engaged with and to understand those conversations. There are some big businesses out there, perhaps like pharma, for example, uh, who um, uh, are very uh, unsure and somewhat handcuffed as far as what they, uh, what they can be doing uh, on social media, but it's a way for them to be able to take a close look and see how they can insert themselves and be useful to the conversation. And I think that's an important thing is to understand the dynamics of the conversation and how uh, you as a company can fit in and be an asset to that conversation. Uh, so I think there's a lot of different ways that uh, both businesses and individuals can use this to help navigate that space to um, truly become involved in it and uh, to, to start to participate and further the conversation and to contribute to it in, in new ways for the betterment. It's, uh, this is still the, the, the overall application period for, for potentially patient scholars. Uh, Hugo, this is for you. Uh, when it comes to using the hashtag outside of the conference, are, are there any specific um, pieces, of, pieces of information that you, that, you, that you tend to share on hashtag after a conference? Are there any conversations that you try to stay in tune with? Are there any other kind of activities that you try to engage with when it comes to using the hashtag outside of the conference, but it's still, it can be relevant to the overall conversation? Right. So it, it's... Yeah, I, um, it's it's very relevant throughout the entire year. I think um, I, I think it's relevant for us to stay in touch with um, our uh, uh, fellow participants in the conference. It's it, we, we we discuss um, uh, things that we learned at the conference and things that are going to uh, come up uh, hopefully in the in the following year. So it's very useful and um, and it's not just on Twitter and, and but but also you know Facebook now has has uh, hashtags and I. I, I I use Facebook quite a bit, and I, I a lot of times I do post things and, and use some of the make a reference to the the, the hashtag on Facebook, hoping that um, that the conversation will also kind of um, uh, spill over to other to other types of uh, social media. So anyway, it's I find it very useful throughout the entire year to stay in touch with folks. It's very um, good to me. <laughs> So, uh, Alden, as, as Hugo mentioned, that he is using Facebook, and, and Facebook has recently enabled hashtags. How are you guys factoring that new component of Facebook into the into all the data that you're collecting? Absolutely, yeah, we, we're very excited about it. Um, just, just we, we looked at some some of the articles, medics um, that that patients and providers and all other stakeholders were, were creating after the medics conference, and we tracked how many times they've been tweeted. We tracked how many times they've been shared on Facebook. They liked on Facebook and comment. It was that was very interesting because you can see how actually Facebook uh, exploded um, many times larger than Twitter and LinkedIn. So so Facebook is very important for us as well. Um, that's a lot of patient conversation happening on Facebook. Uh, it's a little bit different than uh, than uh, than Twitter because Twitter obviously is totally public and there's yeah. no privacy. Uh, but there's certain posts that we can track, which is uh, public pages. Uh, like the like a physician page, a medical group, a hospital page, so we can track that uh, that activity. We can um, we can we can search for certain keywords. Unfortunately, uh, Facebook have not yet provided an API for us to actually track specific hashtags yet. 
So that's something we for sure know they will. Um, we're just waiting for it. Do you, I, I guess it's kind of difficult now because you don't have the full tracking capabilities as you do on Twitter, but do you find that the conversations are, are any more meaningful or any different because they're not, people aren't limited by 140 characters? Yeah, good question. Well, it's, it's definitely uh, it would be in more mixed media, even though we see a Twitter doing the same thing now, uh, embedding uh, you know full full width videos, full width images into the stream. Um, I, I would think that um, it's it's kind of hard to 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 see right now because I would think more people would be a bit perhaps more personal on Facebook. Um, but then again, that's that's considering that it's private. You know, they share certain things to, with uh, specific people only. Um, we see that since Twitter is totally public, uh, those people and, and patients who, who participate on Twitter, they, they are very engaged patients. They want to be public because they want to change the way healthcare is done. They want to help uh, fellow patients and they want to change the way you know, the, the public is, is uh, thinking about uh, diseases or conditions. So, in, in order to do that change, you need to be public. So I think um, that must be the, the strength of Twitter. So as we move on to our, our third topic, um, I, I think Thomas, this is I mean, we got a question from Austin, the incidental, excuse me, from the incidental economist. Um, he's asking what uh, what what percentage of healthcare tweets, or is he's asking of all the tweet of all of all the, the overall conversation on Twitter, what percentage are healthcare tweets? And I think that that kind of ties into our third topic of, of the, uh, kind of looking forward. To, to potential, uh, I guess, metrics, um, analytics, and things like that. Where do you see all these conversations going? As far as, as far as the overall use of Twitter w w when it comes to healthcare and things like that, do you see any kind of any kind of uh, any kind of specific percentages that, that are lending one direction or another? Uh, I've not heard a figure on the percentage of uh, healthcare tweets out there as compared to the overall number of tweets on Twitter. But I can point out that. And you'll remember this, during the most recent MedX conference, uh, on day one, the MedX hashtag was trending, which means that we were uh, the top, if not one of the top uh, uh, conversations happening at that point in time, uh, at least in the U.S. on Twitter. Uh, that's pretty substantial when you consider the amount of tweets that are going out in a single day, that a healthcare conversation uh, generated initially by a few hundred people uh, was able to race to the top of the charts like that. And you'll also recall that because uh, that was such a large discussion that it started to get spammed, <laughs> which is uh, the odd badge of honor there. Um, so, and, and you know, I, I think at some point, um, and, and I'm going to give a shout out to one of our other partners at, at Simpler, and that's Dr. Howard Lux. Uh, he has had a, uh, a phrase that he has used repeatedly in his tweets and blog posts over the years, and that is quite simply, we are all patients. And so it's not just like there's this small group of people that are concerned with their health and occasionally talk about it on Twitter. Uh, at, at some point, uh, people that are on social media quite likely have at least a short discussion about their health. So it is definitely, I think, a large slice of what's going on out there. Lisa, I haven't included you in this conversation uh, of late. I'm sorry about that. But um, as far as looking forward uh, to, to the broader healthcare conversation, I mean, how do you how do you see this hashtag business kind of playing out? Do you think that it's just going to be with the hashtag and just you know including your tweet in that, and, and it just kind of stays there? Do you think that there's any kind of future potential outside of just simply using Twitter and a simple hashtag to engage in these conversations? Okay, thanks for the hard question. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry about that. I, as, as I was formulating it, I realized that I kind of laid the really heavy one on you. I see. Hmm. Um, you know, that I am not a, you know, honestly, I could not answer that question, but it does bring up some, some thoughts. Um, because, for instance, you know, we're talking about, okay, we're using this hashtag, but... And I think this is this is why social media has become such a such a a magnet for people talking about, for instance, healthcare, because it brings together so many people who are so passionate and who are able to find each other through 
for instance, a hashtag, because at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, the hashtag was a search term, if I'm correct. So now it, it feels to me that it's become so much more than that. For instance, um, I've been a long-time participant in the BCSM chat, that's the Monday night chat around breast cancer, and when I participate in that chat, I feel that I am part of a team because everyone who is part of that chat feels equally passionate. Many, many different views are, are, um, are you know, are shared and tolerated, and but we're all working for a greater thing, you know, it's, or several greater objectives, be it advocacy or supporting each other or so so forth. And so we have a, it's like we create the hashtag enables us to have this personal connection and I think that's what's happened with MedicineX as well. It's such a human to human, human being conference where we get down to biz the business of whatever it is we're interested in but as humans without all that silly small talk and whatnot and I think the hashtag becomes an, an emblem of that. Dr. Chiraz, we're looking forward to MedX 2014. Um, and, and, we, and we think about all the data that Simpler is collecting. We know that, I mean, that there are doctors that are increasingly participating in the conversation. Patients are obviously included in this conversation as it's a, I mean, as it's, it's a super important part of what MedicineX is. Are there any particular perspectives that you're looking forward to hopefully seeing increase when it comes to MedX 2014 and, and hopefully people being on hashtag? Absolutely. Um, there are a few groups that I would um, love to hear from to see more represented at Medicine X. Um, as Thomas and Auden have said, we have great participate participation by patients in general relative to other conferences, to physicians, uh, physician engagement uh, uh, relative to other conferences. Um, my personal interest is seeing more a patient scholarship applications from older patients suffering from chronic diseases, they haven't been typically applying to our scholarship program, frankly, and I think they have important stories to tell that I would like to have heard. Um, the other uh, group of patients I would love to see apply to our e-patient program uh, so we can have them share their stories are patients suffering from uh, mental illness. Uh, I think in general that community um, tends to be underrepresented um, uh, in general, but also in our Medicine X conference. Uh, and uh, this year, you know, we've kind of been busy at Medicine X making a bunch of announcements, uh, but we launched our student leadership program, which is designed to bring the future leaders uh, in medicine, and bear in mind it's an interdisciplinary student scholarship program. We're talking about finding and bringing to Medicine X leaders in medicine, in nursing, in pharmacy, in the allied health professions. I would want to see their voices heard more too. Um, it, it actually may be not so well known, but uh, ever since Medicine X was first on the planning stages in 2011, students have been an integral part of the conference from uh, helping to design the program to uh, carrying out the Medicine X uh, program um, to speaking on the main stage. Uh, so we've had students involved since the very beginning of Stanford Medicine X. But this program that we launched just recently aims to expand that involvement even further. So we're making a commitment to, uh, if we can find qualified students, to bring uh, at least one student from Asia, one student from Europe, and one student from Latin or South America, covering their travel expenses and full tuition scholarships. So um, those are some of the voices that I'm hoping we can add to the Medicine X conversation this year. Um, and. Uh, we're really looking forward to hopefully getting the word out through this hangout and through social media um, to try to get those people to apply. Our student scholarship program applications open uh, this Friday, December 20th. So check our website for those applications. And our student leadership program um, applications close on January 20th. So actually two programs now 
uh, to apply to if you're a patient. Our ePatient Scholarship Program applications now open, uh, closing on January 10th. And then, of course, our Student Leadership Program that we just announced that uh, will open December 20th and close on January 20th. And again, uh, uh, medicinex.stanford.edu for more information on that if you are interested. Uh, Hugo, this question comes from somebody called Hurt Blogger on Twitter. Hi, Britt. Um, she's, she's asking, what's one thing that providers and patients can do to better uh, tell their story online? And I, I suppose the, the simple answer would be use, you know, use complete sentences and proper grammar. But beyond that, what do you think people could be doing to better tell their story online? Um, I, 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 I think I, I don't know, I and mean, I think I think folks can 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 the the first step is to um, just be online and tell your story. I don't I don't know how else to say it, but in the way um, uh, you you know you, you start telling your story, engaging in social media because I you know like I said I I, I try to kind of say it at the beginning. I'm not sure that I made um, much sense. But I, with, what's what's really important about social media is that uh, folks really have um, um, a a platform um, where it, it really depends on your on your own talent on uh, how much uh, you, you how um, in, in terms of how successful you are in telling your story. I think if you play an instrument, go ahead and play it. If you if you're a, a, a fantastic writer write a blog about it or create a blog and start blogging about it. Uh, if you uh, are better with uh, short, quick thoughts, join, join, join Twitter. Um, if you're a talented video maker, go ahead and make uh, YouTube uh, videos. And so there are so many different ways to engage nowadays and so many different channels uh, that it really is up to finding whatever, whatever it is that anybody feels more comfortable with. and. Um, and exploring it, and uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes and make a fool of yourself, uh, because it, it we're all kind of um, learning. And so I think I think it's just to have the courage to be out there um, and 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 tell your story and and learn from your mistakes. I, I think. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Lisa. You wanted to add to this. Oh, just a quick note. Uh, for instance, um, you know. There's so, as Hugo so well said, yes, there's so many different ways you can tell your story. One of the things that I found to be so helpful for me when I was starting out uh, with Twitter was that I was able to do it. Um, first of all, I didn't put my name out because I was still very, very private about, you know, talking about the fact that I was a cancer patient and very scared of that. Um, so you're able to dabble and sort of experiment under an alias, and as long as you're doing it authentically, and you know, and being being speaking as a true individual and you know 140 characters at a time in conversation with other people that's n that can be l less overwhelming sorry less overwhelming for some people than you know the idea of a blog or whatever especially when you're starting out so that's just something to consider you know you could start really small Thomas, question is for you. Uh, Dr. Chu had mentioned that he's hoping that certain um, kind of populations and, and overall communities will have their voices expanded through both Medicine X and I guess in the overall healthcare conversation. One community um, in particular would be the elderly, the elderly community, or people that might be um, that might be uh, uh, that might be in assisted living. Um, do you have any tips or, or any advice for for people that are trying to engage that that particular community in social media? I think that at least from my perspective, uh, it, I'm not really sure. I want to say that I'm not sure that, that that the elderly are actually on Twitter, but I'd be surprised to see what kind of conversation, what, what kind of conversational possibilities are available on Twitter. Uh, interesting question, uh, and uh, I, th I think as the years go by, there will be more elderly people on Twitter because I plan on being around for a while. I will be one <laughs> <Good> of point. them. <laughs> but uh, in the short run, I you know maybe not Twitter, but I can uh, I recall a couple years ago looking at uh, some statistics about Facebook, for example. The fastest growing demographic were females, I think, over the age of 55, and maybe Auden can correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, and I think one of the things that's happening that social media suddenly becomes relevant uh, to our senior population is being connected to family that is spread out and with grandchildren entering the scene or great-grandchildren that becomes the incentive I believe uh, and it's up to the younger generations to introduce that 
uh, to the senior population and to um, uh, really kind of share those types of things with them. I, I don't know of, uh, of um, uh, anything that I could share specific to assisted living offhand, although I can tell you that more uh, long-term care facilities in general, just like acute care hospitals, are establishing Twitter accounts of their own and establishing face pages of their own as a means of communicating with the surrounding community and with the families of the residents. Interesting. Uh, so we've got about 10 minutes left in our hangout, so we kind of start to get to some closing thoughts. Alden, we'll start with you. Do you have any bold predictions for the upcoming year as far as, as, far as Twitter, social media, hashtag use, Simpler's ability to maintain server stability uh, in the upcoming year? <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to be busy next year. That's my prediction. <laughs> um, you know, we see, we see since we started, uh, growth of healthcare social media is, is exponentially. So that's what we're dealing with. And it, it's not stalling yet. So it means either that more and more people are using Twitter or it means that healthcare in general are, are just using more and more Twitter. Uh, it's, just, it's just so much more tweets going on. We see a number of tweets. We see a number of tweet chats. We now have to 100 different tweet chats, various diseases, people meeting every week, every other week. Um, uh, we're going to, I guess, for, for the next year's conference, um, we're going to be way past uh, half a billion tweets. <laughs> so let's, let's talk more data then. That's, that's pretty fascinating. I mean, there are so many, you know, kind of hashtags and tweet chats happening. I'm sure there are probably two or three happening right now across the world, and that's just kind of the joy of the internet. The fact that, I mean, that we can kind of share. The, 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 there's like a whole collaborative space out there that we can share and have and have these health conversations out there, and ultimately we can kind of come back to it. And and, and I guess it's, as, that is one of the good things about having uh, having that Twitter archive is that we can always go back to those conversations when, whenever necessary. Uh, Hugo, any closing thoughts as we kind of sign out here? Um, I am I, well. My 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 big my big question here all day has been, um, how come it's a beautiful day in uh, where, uh, Stanford where uh, Dr. Chu is uh, broadcasting from, and it's already <laughs> night where I live, and I'm t <laughs> not too uh, not too far off uh, from there. <laughs> no, um, no, seriously. I yeah, I all I'm saying is uh, see you on social media. That's that's all I have to say. <laughs> Fantastic, Lisa. Any closing thoughts? Yes, absolutely. One of my dreams has come true, and I, I know I speak for many people, you know, from the first time I ever attended Medicine X, at the end of it, all I could think of was, do I have to wait a year for this to, you know, this to happen again? And so now that we have MedX Live, uh, I'm just so excited that we get to, to continue what we're doing throughout the year and keep connecting and learning and growing. Over and out from me. All right, Thomas, I'll give you the last word on Simpler. Please plug anything you feel necessary. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to echo a little bit of what Auden said, and that's, I think, in this coming year, uh, it, it's, we, we as Simpler really need to be able to gear up for volume, and that's something that we certainly want to keep on playing a role in helping to facilitate these conversations, and that's got to be of prime importance to us. We're seeing about uh, a million and a half new tweets per day added to our database, and that's going to be going up, I think, substantially in the months to come. So uh, we hope to accommodate all that. I look forward to, to seeing some kind of SOS from you at the end of Medicine Next 2014 saying, hey, guys, there's smoke coming out of one of our servers because you guys were far too active and far too engaged in the conversation. So I, I, I guess it's kind, of, it's kind of poor of me to kind of wish that ill will upon you, but I guess it might be the best problem to have in the grand scheme of things. Um, Dr. Chu, we made it to another one of the, we made it to the end of another one of these things. I guess we do have a, a little bit of paperwork to kind of close out here. Um, for those of you that haven't been paying attention, um, the conversation uh, evolves and it, and it continues to, to kind of be to kind of be spread everywhere. Um, for those of you following the conversation on Twitter, the hashtag is MedX, Stanford MedX on Twitter, on Facebook, facebookcom MedX, and the most recent announcement, in addition to the student uh, scholarship, is the fact that the conference dates have changed. Dr. Chu, I'm going to let you kind of unveil the curtain on that one. Okay, um, well, first of all, it's always sunny and warm here <laughs> at Camp Med X. Uh, uh, no matter what time of day it is, uh, it's always warm and balmy, so stop by any time. Um, 
<laughs> but um, the other thing, you know, to wrap up our discussion on social media uh, in healthcare, um, I I want to point out the very conversation that we're having. Uh, Stanford MedX Live, these Google Hangouts and live tweet chats, um, it's evolving the model of a medical conference. Uh, and it's the idea being it's not it's not just going to be anymore uh, a three day Stanford Medicine X. We can continue the conversation and the excitement uh, and um, the innovating discussions year round uh, through these weekly tweet chats. Um, now, speaking of our actual conference at Stanford, um, uh, I want to um, to thank Beth Axelrod, um, who is um, was following us on Twitter, pointed out to us um, that uh, Medicine X, the original dates that we had planned, were uh, falling during Rosh Hashanah, which of course is a major uh, Jewish holiday, the Jewish New Year. And we felt it was really important that we move the dates um, so that everyone would be able to participate without conflicts from family uh, events and, and, of course, the holiday itself. So we've moved the dates. Medicine X is now going to be uh, starting on Friday, uh, September 5th, and ending on Sunday, September 7th. So. Remember last week when we told you to write down the dates? You can erase that and write in the new dates. Um, and I'm also um, uh, excited to announce, just confirmed with Dennis Boyle, uh, that the Stanford Medicine X IDO Design Challenge will be happening again. And we have it confirmed uh, for Thursday, September 4th, uh, the day before Medicine X starts. Uh, so uh, new dates, please update your calendars. Um, thanks for your patience with us. Thank you, Beth Axelrod, out there for pointing out our oversight. Um, but I'm glad we have it resolved now. And I think, for the record, if, if, we do, if we do want to go back into the archives, you did say mark that down in pencil. You didn't say in pen. So I, I, I think <laughs> I, see, you do have that out there. So don't worry about that one. Um, okay, so I think that's going to be it for uh, for our hangout tonight. Uh, again, the conference, Med uh, MedX 2014, September 5th and 7th. Or, excuse me, so we're going the 5th through the 7th. For all you e-patient scholars out there, if you haven't applied, please do so. Your deadline to apply is January 10th, 2014. Again, you can go to medicinex.stanford.edu for more information there. Um, Thomas Auden, thanks again for coming on this Hangout. Uh, I, I love talking about this stuff. Um, I love it so much that I had to soldier through all of my technical difficulties to try to make this conversation happen as smoothly as possible. Um, Hugo, Lisa, Dr. Chu, Nick, even though you're not actually going to respond because you're doing all that hard work behind the scenes. Thanks for coming out uh, tonight. And I guess our next Hangout will be uh, it'll be January 7th, 2014. So everybody out there, happy holidays, happy new year, stay safe. And I guess the next time you'll see me, I'll actually be living on the West Coast. That's pretty scary. Uh, yeah, so I'm Chris. Thanks again for coming out, everybody. Have a nice night.